we have experience of dealing with collaborative lawyers and mediators in the course of our work, and it's quite important that very early on in the process, after being appointed, that we liaise with your mediator or your financial planner or your collaborative lawyer to ensure that everybody is fully aware of the information that's available, the information that might not be available, and also that we can all work together for your best interest. We have worked with a number of mediators and collaborative lawyers in the past and it's essential actually that we work as a team. We share the same information, we use it in different ways, but at the end of the day we want the best results for our client. We, we are hoping for an amicable divorce. I think in the case where you've got um, interest in a limited company um, and the other spouse is not sure of what that, uh, those interests are worth, then our starting point would normally be to have a look at what's available on the company house records, which is publicly available information on the company, which gives us a starting point as to the activities of the company and the profits that it's been generating. Um, but obviously within a small company, there are opportunities to either increase or decrease the profits um, according to the way the business is run. And if the spouse has not been involved in the running of that business, it will be very difficult for him or her to assess the true profitability and therefore the true value of the company. So where we come in is we take that basic information and then we would liaise with the other accountants that have been involved in the preparation to find out what is behind the information that's on company's house, so the detailed financial information relating to the company, which will enable us to build up a proper picture of the ongoing profitability of that company, and hence the potential value of the company on an independent basis to the other spouse. Often that partner who's not directly involved with the business um, is uh, very anxious at that stage and at, like I say at that time it would be useful to come and see an accountant to really sit down and talk about their concerns. We quite often come across cases where um, one of the spouses is not directly involved with the business entity but um, obviously on divorce the assets of the um, husband and wife need to be shared uh, between them so it's imperative at that point that the person who is not normally dealt with by the firm of accountants seeks independent advice from a firm such as ourselves to make sure the business is properly valued and they're aware of what their share of the business is actually worth um, and we can undertake those valuations very um, quickly and in a sympathetic manner to the person involved. We often come across married couples in this situation, but also we do now come across a number of uh, couples who are not legally married and therefore don't have the same legal rights as a married couple. It's just as important for them as it is a married couple to really sit down and talk about their affairs at the earliest stage possible. Often those couples aren't aware of the financial implications of parting. They don't often know the benefits to be had of sitting down at an early stage um, to discuss those financial implications. And again, we're very much there to support them and, and tell them what they need to do and help them and guide them in getting that financial information and making it, well, trying to make it as a smooth a ride as possible for that couple.